In a town known for glitz and glamour, where the bright lights shine on the silver screen, there exists a darker side of fame. From legendary stars to rising talents, no one is immune to the devastating consequences of alcohol. But this is not just a gossip fest. We're here to shed light on the impact of addiction and the rise and fall of these stars. Here are the 10 worst alcoholics in Hollywood history. Number 10. Oliver Reed Oliver Reed possessed a captivating presence on the screen, enchanting audiences with his portrayal of various notorious villains. He was renowned for his striking blue eyes, facial scars resulting from a bar fight while intoxicated, and exceptional acting abilities that were unfortunately overshadowed by his alcohol addiction, as noted by Ridley Scott and others. Oliver Reed gained significant recognition for his performances in the Three Musketeers trilogy, Oliver Twist, Treasure Island, and Gladiator, among a total of 120 films. Sadly, he passed away after completing his work on Gladiator, following a drinking challenge with Royal Navy sailors at a pub in Malta. Ridley Scott personally selected Oliver Reed for the memorable role of Proximo in Gladiator but only on the condition that Reed would abstain from alcohol during filming. However, according to Reed's close friend, Sir Christopher Lee, after consuming eight drinks, he transformed into a terrible figure, making it a distressing sight to witness. When Oliver Reed was 35 years old, he once got into an argument at a nightclub with a group of men that ended with Reed walking away with a dismissive remark. They waited until he went to the toilet, followed him in, and attacked him with broken bottles. Reed required 63 stitches for a series of deep gouges to the side of his face, leaving him with permanent scars. Reed initially thought his film career was over. Oliver Reed went out on his shield doing the thing he loved best, being the heart of a party. Havoc Incarnate Prior to completing the filming of his last movie, Gladiator, Reed visited a pub one evening and consumed eight bottles of beer, three bottles of rum, and several shots of whiskey. Sadly, he experienced a heart attack and passed away shortly thereafter. Reflecting on his captivating life, Reed frequently expressed a single regret, not having emptied every pub of its drinks and not sleeping with every woman on the planet. Number 9. Richard Burton Immersed in the world of showmanship, Richard Burton, a charismatic actor known for his dynamic style, baritone voice, and relationship with Elizabeth Taylor, was hailed as a worthy successor to the renowned Laurence Olivier. Even today, his brilliance shines through in remarkable performances, such as his Oscar-nominated role in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Yet, as the saying goes, old habits die hard. Burton admitted to starting on his journey with alcohol at the tender age of 12, and during his darkest times, he found himself consumed by the allure of three vodka bottles a day. The impact of his excessive indulgence became evident during the filming of The Klansman, as he struggled to maintain his balance, often resorting to shooting scenes from a seated or reclined position. Off-screen, his behavior wasn't much different. Upon hearing a rumored shark sighting, he once fearlessly downed a staggering 21 shots of tequila before plunging into the depths of the sea. In 1974, Burton's life hung in the balance after a harrowing bout of excessive hard liquor consumption. A few years prior, in 1970, doctors had forewarned him that his indulgence in alcohol would inevitably lead to his demise. His self-destructive habit had caused his kidneys to swell to abnormal sizes and a subsequent surgical procedure in the early 1980s revealed that his spine was encrusted with crystallized alcohol. Despite the cautionary words of the medical experts, this extraordinary Welsh thespian chose to disregard their advice. Tragically, his illustrious career came to an abrupt halt in 1984, as he succumbed to the ravages of alcoholism at the age of 58. Number 8. Barbara Payton Barbara Payton was certainly a contender. In the early 1950s, she was a rising B-list actress who had connections with famous men such as Bob Hope and her husband, Francho Tone. However, her career took a downturn and she spiraled into alcoholism. This led to the loss of her beauty, her livelihood, and multiple encounters with the law due to public intoxication, writing bad checks, and engaging in prostitution. 
Originally from a small town in Minnesota, this stunning blonde ventured off to Hollywood and quickly became one of the most prominent stars of the 1940s and 1950s. She shared the screen with renowned actors like James Cagney, Gary Cooper, and Gregory Peck. However, Peyton's personal life was a chaotic mess. She had numerous affairs with almost every man she met, violent relationships, shoplifting, prostitution, and numerous run-ins with the police. During the 1960s, her battles with alcoholism got worse, but it gave her a sense of stability and an otherwise troubled life. Peyton's life deteriorated further after she lost custody of her son because of her immoral lifestyle. As an illustration, in 1962, she faced charges of being publicly intoxicated when she was discovered sleeping at a bus stop on Sunset Boulevard, wearing a coat and a bathing suit. Additionally, she was arrested that same year for disorderly conduct while under the influence of alcohol during a rowdy afternoon party. Soon after, she began spending countless evenings in bars and pubs. Sadly, at just 39 years old, she was found deceased due to heart and liver disease and had such a drastic change in appearance that it was difficult to recognize her. Number 7. John Barrymore This classical actor, belonging to the renowned Barrymore family of actors, was a prominent figure in the early 1900s. He was highly acclaimed as one of the greatest of his time. Interestingly, he gained recognition for his portrayal of sympathetic characters with alcohol addictions in movies, despite the fact that he struggled with alcoholism himself. Although he was primarily known for his remarkable interpretations of Shakespearean roles and his captivating performance as Mr. Hyde, followed by his portrayal of Sherlock Holmes, his troubled upbringing and challenging later years intensified his drinking problem. In fact, there was an incident where his second wife caught him attempting to drink her cologne. In 1933, he appeared in a successful comedy film titled Dinner at Eight, directed by George Cooker. In this film, he played one of his earliest drunkard roles, portraying an alcoholic actor. Unfortunately, in the years that followed, his career suffered greatly due to his ongoing struggle with alcohol and its detrimental effect on his memory. Starting in 1936, he had to rely on cue cards to complete his roles. This marked the decline of his professional journey. A few of these roles would chronicle the tale of a man who sinks into a life of drinking and debauchery, and his hands shook uncontrollably. In 1942, at the age of 60, struggling with cirrhosis, kidney disease, and chronic edema, he finally crumpled and died soon thereafter. Legend has it that following the death of Barrymore, a close circle of his drinking companions, which included Humphrey Bogart, John Houston, and David Niven, decided to play a macabre prank. The story has it that they apparently borrowed Barrymore's lifeless body and transported it to the residence of their mutual friend Errol Flynn. The group positioned the corpse in a chair, drink in hand, facing the entrance. When Errol Flynn returned home and switched on the lights, he was startled to see his deceased mentor staring directly at him. Overwhelmed by the shock, Flynn fled through the house and into the backyard, screaming like a frightened child. His friends eventually found him and guided him back inside, where they all gathered around the corpse and shared a few drinks. They returned the body before daybreak. Pulling off such an outrageous prank required a group of people consumed by alcoholism and this particular circle was infamous for their excessive drinking habits. We don't know if it's true, but it's definitely possible. Number 6. Jan Michael Vincent Jan Michael Vincent, a renowned Hollywood figure known for his striking looks and role on the popular TV series Airwolf, had a life that started with immense potential, but ended tragically. Despite possessing exceptional physical attributes and achieving fame, Vincent's excessive alcohol and drug use led him down a destructive path. His numerous drunk driving convictions, involvement in major car crashes resulting in injuries, such as a broken back and a loss of a leg, domestic violence toward his girlfriend, and premature aging due to substance abuse are all stark reminders of his downfall. Once hailed as the Brad Pitt of the 70s and 80s, Vincent's captivating appearance and chiseled physique enchanted audiences across America, leaving an indelible mark. However, his career began with an almost fairy tale like encounter, 
catching the eye of a film scout while serving in the California Army National Guard. This opportunity propelled him to rapid success, starring alongside such notable actors as Robert Conrad, Brock Hudson, Charles Bronson, John Wayne, Burt Reynolds, and Robert Mitchum in major motion pictures. Sadly, Vincent never had to experience the usual struggles or pay his dues that many aspiring actors face, leading to a sense of entitlement and an inability to handle the easy success that came his way. Financially, he reached the pinnacle of his career when he earned a record-breaking salary for his role on Airwolf, becoming the highest-paid actor in television history at that time. However, this excessive wealth enabled him to indulge in destructive habits, including cocaine and alcohol. During the second and third seasons of Airwolf, his addictions became increasingly evident, causing production delays, budget overruns, and eventually leading to the show's premature cancellation. Vincent's downfall continued, transforming him from an A-list Hollywood star to an unemployable, has-been actor in B-films. In 1996, he experienced a life-threatening car accident, breaking his neck and revealing his extreme intoxication at the time. His addiction killed him in the end, and his death at age 74 in 2019 from a heart attack marked the end of a once promising career that was ruined by personal problems and self-destructive behavior. Number 5. Errol Flynn Errol Flynn, the ultimate embodiment of charm and masculinity, left an indelible mark as the legendary swashbuckler in films like Robin Hood and Captain Blood. But behind the silver screen, his life was an audacious whirlwind of debauchery, darkness, and unyielding adventure. This notorious ladies' man was proud of his image as a seductive rogue, a fierce fighter, a cocaine enthusiast, and an ardent lover of the bottle. Not only did Flynn find himself clinking glasses with Fidel Castro himself in Cuba, but his own bachelor pad in Malibu, which he shared with fellow actor David Niven, earned the notorious nickname Cirrhosis by the Sea due to the sheer volume of alcohol consumed within its walls. On his private boat, he orchestrated wild soirees fueled by sex, booze, and cocaine. Such was his dedication to the art of excess that he even stumbled onto film sets in a drunken haze, once impulsively betting $500 with the crew that he could conquer his co-star, the captivating Olivia de Havilland. Upon suffering a harrowing collapse in an elevator during his early 30s, a medical professional delivered the grim news. His heart and lungs had sustained irreparable damage. Astonishingly, this revelation did little to deter his relentless pursuit of indulgence. Tragically, his excessive lifestyle eventually claimed him at the age of 50, as he succumbed to a fatal heart attack. By the time of his passing, his once dashing figure had been replaced by a bloated and overweight frame, plagued by the ravages of cirrhosis. Number 4. Humphrey Bogart Humphrey Bogart has been hailed as the greatest male actor in the history of American cinema. With numerous Academy Award nominations and memorable performances in timeless classics like Casablanca, The Maltese Falcon, Treasure of the Sierra Madre, The African Queen, and many others, it's easy to understand why he earned immense respect among Hollywood actors. However, in his personal life, Bogart was known for heavy drinking. According to one of his friends, quote, Bogart is a really nice guy until around 11.30 p.m. After that, he transforms into a version of himself he believes is Bogart. During these moments, when under the influence, he could become angry, stubborn, or even abusive. As his illustrious career progressed, his drinking started to impact his work. He often arrived on set either intoxicated or suffering from a hangover. There was one instance where he appeared in his pajamas, refusing to work and instead opting to ride a bicycle around the Warner Brothers studio. While filming the adventure film Sahara, it is said that he refused to leave his dressing room until his then-wife, Mayo Metho, brought him a thermos filled with martinis. Even when not on a film set, Bogart rarely went long without getting heavily intoxicated. There was also an incident where he drunkenly left a restaurant with their safe, only to abandon it on Beverly Hills Boulevard. He also found himself in court after assaulting a few women who attempted to take away the toy panda he had brought to an exclusive club as a drinking companion. 
Despite drinking with actors like Richard Burton and Frank Sinatra, Bogart frequently found himself in trouble and was eventually barred from pubs, bars, and clubs. His persistent love for drinking and smoking took a toll on his health in his later years. In 1956, he was diagnosed with cancer and passed away shortly thereafter. Even during his final days, he could still be seen holding a glass of sherry. Number 3. Peter O'Toole With an impressive eight Academy Award nominations and notable performances in highly acclaimed films like Lawrence of Arabia, Peter seemed to have an impeccable record on screen. However, his personal life told a different story. Early on in his acting career, O'Toole had a penchant for alcohol. While filming Lawrence of Arabia, his excessive drinking escapades in Beirut, Lebanon became legendary, and he was reportedly intoxicated through the entire production of the 1964 classic Beckett. There was even an incident where he took a date to watch a play in Soho, only to realize that he was the star of the show. O'Toole and his drinking companions were known for their frequent intoxication. He fondly remembered occasions like having a beer in a Parisian pub and waking up in Corsica the next day. He even claimed to have learned about John F. Kennedy's assassination 22 years after it happened, showcasing his obliviousness due to his inebriation. Eventually, O'Toole gave up drinking after experiencing abdominal pain and receiving warnings about the detrimental effects of alcohol on his health. However, the damage had already been done. In his later years, his once remarkable appearance had visibly deteriorated, and in 2013, he passed away in a London hospital, ravaged by years of heavy drinking and chain smoking. Number 2. William Claude Dukenfield W.C. Fields, whose original name was William Claude Dukenfield, was a renowned actor and one of America's greatest comedians, known for his impeccable timing and humorous grumpiness. He seamlessly blended his real-life persona with his on-screen characters, and is particularly remembered for his unique nasal voice, unsociable nature, and affinity for alcohol. Fields achieved stardom in his mid-50s, but his career and life almost came to a premature end just a few years later. His alcoholism reached extreme levels, with reports suggesting he consumed over two quarts of gin daily. This led to severe health issues, including delirium tremens, and after barely making it through films like Poppy in 1936 and The Big Broadcast in 1938, Paramount dropped him. Despite his ongoing struggle with alcohol, Fields experienced a lengthy recovery period, during which he became a regular on the popular radio show The Chase and Sanborn Hour in 1937. The show starred ventriloquist Edgar Bergen and his wooden sidekick Charlie McCarthy. Fields' comedic banter with McCarthy became legendary on radio, and he found solace in the relatively effortless work of radio broadcasting. This radio success helped maintain his status as a star while his health gradually improved, eventually allowing him to make a comeback in films. In the final 22 months of his life, Fields resided at the Las Encinas Sanatorium in Pasadena, California. On Christmas Day 1946, ironically the holiday he claimed to despise, he suffered a massive gastric hemorrhage and passed away at the age of 66. Number 1. Bernard Lee With a half-century of experience as an actor and an impressive list of more than 100 film and television appearances, Bernard Lee had a highly active career in the performing arts. He began his journey at the tender age of six, experimenting with stage productions before gaining widespread recognition in the world of film. Undoubtedly, his most significant achievement was portraying the character M, the leader of the British Secret Service in 11 James Bond films. However, Lee's personal life was marred by tragedy. The devastating loss of his beloved wife in a house fire, a brutal mugging incident, and unresolved financial debts plunged him into a state of depression and alcohol dependency. In fact, his addiction was allegedly so severe that during breaks from filming the Edgar Wallace television series, he would be confined to his dressing room to prevent him from consuming alcohol. Despite these efforts, Lee supposedly found a way to indulge his habit by hiring someone to pass a straw through the keyhole, allowing him to drink discreetly. 
In fact, renowned heavy drinker Richard Burton supposedly admitted that he couldn't match Lee's capacity for alcohol, as Lee once outdrank him. At the age of 73, Lee succumbed to stomach cancer, most likely a result of his excessive alcohol intake. And that concludes our journey through a dark side of Hollywood's history. The tales of these people remind us of the perils of fame and addiction. If you or someone you know is battling with addiction, remember you're not alone. There is hope, there is support, and there is a path to recovery. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.